sitting around the table discussing the project and uh, giving an award out to a reserve that scored the highest on the index and one of the most respected chiefs from the past out there has been Big Bear and I think from that just let's call it the Big Bear Award. Eighteen twenty-five. A half Cree and half Ojibwe child was born. Raised by the West Plains Cree band that wintered along the North Saskatchewan River, he would be known as Big Bear, a strong leader and medicine man. By 1874, he was named chief and declared the head of 65 lodges near Fort Carleton and Fort Pitt. As the newly created Canadian government began signing treaties, it was Big Bear who took up a courageous role for his people. He traveled throughout Western Canada and the United States to try and organize and unite Aboriginal people to negotiate with the government. But decades of tribal warfare proved to be too much to unite the warring factions. When the Canadian monarch sent gifts to tribal leaders to encourage friendship, Big Bear opposed the gesture. In his words, he said, When we set up a fox trap, we scatter pieces of meat all around. But when the fox gets into the trap, we knock him on the head. We want no bait. Let your chiefs come like men and talk to us. When representatives of the government came to negotiate a land treaty, Big Bear stood tall and refused to sign it. He believed it was unfair and biased to the Canadian settlers and campaigned against the government. He believed his people would lose their lifestyle and would be condemned to a life of perpetual poverty. Big Bear continued to persuade other bands to make an alliance so when the treaties were signed they could all take the reserve land next to each other, effectively creating a First Nations country within Canada's borders. When the government got wind of his plan they changed the rules and disallowed it. The incoming National Railroad sliced its way through the Canadian West and Big Bear foresaw that it would seal their fate. As Buffalo stock diminished Big Bear and his people faced destitution. At the same time, the Canadian government withheld emergency rations, but promised signing bonuses and retroactive treaty money to coerce Big Bear's signature. The imminent starvation of his family left him no choice. After holding out for six years, on December 8, 1882, Big Bear signed Treaty No. 6 at Fort Walsh. His people would finally get to eat. Big Bear withdrew from active leadership and followed the spiritual path to enlightenment. His concern for the state of his people spurred him to seek a spiritual solution to the pain and suffering. As much as he counseled peace, he was losing influence with his band and unable to keep his warriors from joining the Northwest Rebellion. When members of his band killed nine white people at Frog Lake, Alberta in 1885, Big Bear was held responsible. He surrendered at Fort Carlton on July 2nd, 1885, and was sentenced to three years in prison for treason. His failing health led to his early release in 1887, and he died on Poundmaker Reserve ten months later. Big Bear was a traditional chief of the Plains Cree, and was chosen and followed for his wisdom above all else. He saw the earth, the land, the water, the air, and the buffalo as gifts from the Great Spirit to all mankind. He didn't see in any sense how anyone could own these gifts or forbid another to use them. Big Bear saw European civilization as destructive to his people, but he fought with ideas, not weapons. He was the last of the great chiefs seeking to unite Aboriginal people to strive for one huge reserve for all Plains Indians. If his young warriors hadn't followed Riel's example of force, maybe Big Bear could have persuaded other Plains chiefs that a peaceful unity was their only hope.